Right, Talio de Champs, and have a look at these two things. Yes, the best laptops of 2020, the MacBook Pro 16 versus XPS 15 9500. And best is subjective, of course. But for me, there's no hiding the fact that these are my two favorite laptops. And in this video, we're gonna find out which one is best or best for you. Now I have said in previous videos that the Dell XPS 15 was the go 2015 to 2019 and then Apple come out with the MacBook Pro 16 and I reckon yeah they raised the bar again. But how long has their reign last and has the XPS 15 taken the crown again? Now when it comes to price Dell stopped ripping us off in Australia. Simple as that. Apple's prices are really easy to work out especially here in Australia. It's the US prices plus 10%. I don't know who's doing the calculations for the XPS prices in Australia, but it's not the US prices plus 10%. And when I can get a MacBook Pro cheaper for the equivalent sort of specs than an XPS 15 in Australia, Dell, you have a problem. Because I'll just recommend the Mac right here, right now. I'll just tell you that. But this will vary region to region. Certainly in the US, the XPS 15 is cheaper than the MacBook Pro. And there is one thing to consider here. The resale of the Max is just amazing. Now, considering that the XPS 15 is more competitive in the US, I'll just base everything on that. Dell's prices are very competitive, if not more affordable than the Mac, but they're both expensive, okay? <laughs> These are the upper echelon of, you know, laptops. They are the most premium laptops. You pay the most premium price. When it comes to design and build quality, I've said this in previous videos and it still stands today. I think the Mac looks better from the outside. When the lid is closed, the external look, I prefer it's darker grey. The Apple logo, although I don't care for it, it does look nice. Uniform thickness, it looks beautiful. And compared to the XPS 15, from the outside and when the lid's closed as well. So I actually don't like the Dell tramp stamp on top of the lid there. I actually stole that from Ash from Vitudio. Check out his channel if you like Mac, 5G and all that sort of stuff. He's a champion from the Gold Coast. I actually would prefer if they put that XPS logo on the top and I actually prefer the underside of the XPS 15. It looks better than the top to me and I do prefer the darker grey. Hopefully they're going to bring out a white XPS 15 but from the outside the Mac looks better to me. But when you open it up there is no contest here. It's so compact this XPS 15 compared to the MacBook Pro or any other 15 inch like it really is a sight to behold the infinity edge display is just the future of laptops now when i look at the macbook pro 16 when they're both open and you have them side by side you can't not see those bezels on the mac its footprint is massive all right it's a bigger screen but it just has a bigger footprint overall it could be shrunk if they got rid of the bezels but yeah opened up xps 15 is the king Close, I reckon the Mac looks the best. And in terms of quality control, build quality and stuff like that, I've had issues with Macs. So I haven't had that many issues with the XPS 15. So I can only speak from my anecdotal experience, but um, I doubt when it's all said and done, there's any great difference between that. Just quality control, etc. Now, I don't have any evidence of this, but I reckon the XPS 15 would be tougher. I mean, I can pick it up by the screen. I wouldn't do that on a Mac. I reckon it would break. And Ash from Vitudio, my man, he reckons he broke the screen from just picking it up and having it held the wrong way. Yeah, that's true. So when it comes to the specs, let's have a look at these specs and dig into it. Now let's ignore the top line of CPUs because it really doesn't matter. Ninth generation, 10th generation, the stuff all different really. Now when it comes to RAM, they both have up to 64 gigabytes of RAM. However, the RAM is faster on the XPS 15 and you can also upgrade it. I actually believe there are 64 gigabyte DIMMs now. So it probably is possible to put 128 gigs RAM in the XPS 15. And of course the RAM is faster as well and easily upgradable whereas on the Mac you cannot do it. You cannot upgrade, you get the RAM you need, and that's it. Now, certainly in gaming and stuff like that, speed of RAM really makes a difference. But for content creation, it really can make a difference having faster RAM. So that's one thing to bear in mind there. Now, when it comes to the GPUs, the XPS 15 comes with 4GB GTX 1650 Ti, and the MacBook Pro has two GPU options. But we'll talk about their best one, which is the AMD Radeon Pro 5500M. Now, you can get up to 8GB on that GPU. Now the reason the 1650 Ti exists, the GPU that's in the XPS 15, 
is so it can beat the RX 5500, which it does. But the 5500M in the Mac is special. It has an extra two compute units. And if you're going to talk about raw performance between the two, very similar whether it's Firestrike or Luxmark, there's not that much difference between the two. The big difference here is the 8GB option that you do have with the Mac. Now, mostly for 4K content and gaming, 4GB is perfectly enough, but there are going to be situations or applications that use more than 4GB of video memory and the option of 8GB on the Mac is just better. That's why I wanted a 1660 Ti in the XPS 15 just for the extra video memory. I don't care if they limited the power of it, just give us that extra video memory. That's what I want. So in terms of power of the GPU, you know, there's nothing between them really. Now when it comes to displays, well, I've actually seen some other reviews of the XPS 15 where they did get 100% Adobe RGB when they measured the display. So that's good. I'm thinking I got a dud because I've measured it in HDR mode, every single mode known to man, and I could only get 80% Adobe RGB. So it's good to see other people at least getting it. Now, the XPS 15 does have a touch display and it's Ultra HD or 4K plus and it's HDR. 500 nits of brightness, as I said before, 100% Adobe RGB. The MacBook Pro has a bigger 16 inch display. They are both 16 by 10, so that is awesome. You know, 500 nits, yeah, you're gonna get around that for both of them, and it's 100% P3. They both have wide color gamuts. They are both amazing displays, 16 by 10. I guess it comes down to, do you need the extra resolution? Do you need the sharpness of the XPS? Because the XPS screen is definitely sharper. It pops more. Everyone that's seen it has said, yeah, it looks better. I don't think they're individually calibrated. I think they're batch calibrated. So <laughs> your mileage may vary there. I know the Macs are individually calibrated. So you most likely will get better color accuracy at the Mac display and the box. And I just think they're generally calibrated better for accuracy but they don't look as good as the XPS 15. The XPS 15 display looks better, looks more contrasty, pops more. It's a touch display as well, it's sharper. You can also get a full HD plus display on the XPS 15. That will give you much better battery life. And the reason the Mac display is 2560 by 1600 is they're trying to save battery life. They've made the compromise of going to a lower resolution in favor of battery. It's gonna be up to you whether you think that compromise is for you or it's not, because we'll see later there is a difference in battery life. And now in terms of storage, the Mac can have up to eight terabytes of storage you can buy from them. The XPS 15, you have two M.2 slots. They're upgradable, whatever size SSD you want. If they bring out eight terabyte M.2 SSDs, you can conceivably have 16 terabytes and it's easily upgradable. I will say, however, the Mac have best in class SSD controller. It's controlled by the T2 chip and they make a custom SSD controller and it's just best in class. I don't know what Dell use. They probably use off the shelf when it comes to an SSD controller or whatever. But with the Dell, you can have the ultimate setup of having your Windows on one SSD and having your content on the other, which is the best way to do content creation. And when it comes to battery size, we have 86 watt hour on the XPS 15 versus 99 or virtually 100 watt hours on the MacBook Pro. Now the MacBook Pro undoubtedly has the best battery life, has a lower resolution display, a bigger battery. So you will be getting your 10 hour sort of battery life. The smaller battery on the XPS 15, the 86 watt hour battery, you're still gonna get six and a half, seven hours with that Ultra HD Plus, but you can get the full HD Plus, and in this scenario, the XPS 15 will have the better battery life. So you can get better battery life on the XPS 15, even though it has a smaller battery, if you get the lower resolution displays. Pick which one you want, I guess, but with their best displays, Mac, around 10 hours battery life, XPS 15, six and a half, maybe seven. And when it comes to weight and thickness, the MacBook Pro is actually lighter. And it's quite amazing for a laptop with a bigger battery, a bigger size, bigger footprint, I guess they're really just making their materials thinner, which may affect durability, I don't know. But really they're both around the same sort of weight, but you can get a small battery on the XPS 15 and be lighter if you want, but the XPS 15 is definitely more compact. It is a smaller footprint. It is the easier laptop to carry around. When it comes to ports, they're very similar on the ports here. MacBook Pro has four Thunderbolt 3 ports, two on each side. The XPS 15 has two Thunderbolt 3s on the left, one USB Type-C with display out and power out on the right, but it has that magical SD card reader. So for me, 
That gives it the win there of having that extra port that you don't have to carry around a dongle. Although if you do need the bandwidth of four Thunderbolt 3 ports, maybe the Mac is the better solution there. But having an SD card reader makes a world of difference and you still get Thunderbolt 3. So what can you complain about? And you get a dongle with it as well. So I'll give the win here to the XPS. When it comes to sound, let's have a listen to both of them. All right, now we're going to listen to the audio of this and I'll use this mic here, listen on headphones or something like that because of YouTube compression and just, if you're listening on crappy speakers, it's not going to matter, is it? This mic is a fraction of the price of the Soundhouser mic, the equivalent version of this, and it sounds just as good. So I'll leave a link to that, but we'll listen to some music on this, then we'll compare it to the MacBook Pro. One, two, three, four. All right, let's have a listen. Oh, All right, so let's listen to the Mac and have a look at him. He's going to get some action, I'm telling you. So yeah, I've got to say, the Mac sound is better. That's like a 10 out of 10. I reckon the XPS 15 gets a 9 out of 10. And I think it's louder as well. So pretty comparable, but the Mac has the better sound. Keyboard and trackpad, well, trackpad, just forget about it. The Mac is the king here. It is the best trackpad, bar none. Let's have a look at the XPS 15's trackpad. So when it comes to the trackpad, nice glass trackpad, it is huge. Look how huge it is. I mean, there's some people with uh, smaller diaphragms than that. And I've got pretty big hands. I've got lots of big stuff. Anyway, the only thing bad about this is the clunk is, I don't know, it's not my favorite sort of click. And also it's a diving board mechanism. The track is fine. I have had a couple of instances where I've just, there you go. <laughs> I did not mean to bring that up. But um, accidentally brought up things with gestures and stuff like that unintentionally. Um, it is a nice tracking. The click, obviously, down the bottom, it's really nice. But once you sort of get to the top, of course, diving board mechanism, it's not so nice at the top. So really, the sweet spot's only here. So it's a lot of wasted space. Yeah, so pretty good trackpad, but not quite there, right? Now, when it comes to keyboards, using both these keyboards, they're both great keyboards. But I did actually have the Surface Book 3 in alongside these laptops, and I have made a video comparing these. Also, you can see the performance difference between the XPS 15, MacBook Pro 16, and Surface Book 3. I have that video out already, so if you want to know specifically performance and content creation, gaming, etc., check that video out. But that Surface Book 3 definitely has a better keyboard than both of these. When it comes to these keyboards, I can't choose a winner out of them. They're both good keyboards. The only thing I like better on the Mac is the inverted T's. I don't like how the arrow keys are on the XPS 15. And I don't like that the delete button is next to the fingerprint sensor on the XPS 15 as well. Even though both of them, I keep on hitting the fingerprint sensor when I'm trying to hit delete. You're not going to complain about the keyboards, but trackpad Mac, yeah, 100%. So when it comes to performance, as I just said before, yes, go check out my Surface Book 3 versus MacBook Pro 16 versus XPS 15 video. You can see all the performance there, but between these two performance, you're not going to notice any difference. Any differences you will see is probably metal optimizations where the Mac has that. That's just how it is. But in terms of just raw power, virtually no difference. I will say that the XPS 15 is quieter. It's cooler. That's because they limited the power on it. At the moment with the latest BIOS, the power is more limited on the XPS 15. That makes it quieter. The fans come on less often. But honestly, the fans don't come on on both of them unless you're really pushing them hard. The XPS 15 under full load is actually not as noisy as the MacBook Pro. It's like two decibels difference. Under full fan load, I doubt you could tell the difference in noise. Under full load, they both do get loud, but they're nothing compared to a gaming laptop. They're like 10 decibels less than 
and a gaming laptop. So they're both as good as you get in terms of fan noise for 15 inch laptops. If you want to talk about sustained load, if you add the GPU and CPU wattage, it's very similar between the two. As it is now, the MacBook Pro does hold about, you know, five to 10 watts more on the CPU than the XPS 15, but then the XPS 15 does hold a higher wattage for longer. The XPS 15 will sustain more longer loads, more power, because it is a 130 watt package compared to a 96 watt. But most of the differences will come down to optimizations on the Mac with metal. So overall, which one is the best laptop? Well, I'm currently in Australia, I'm just going to recommend you buy the Mac until the XPS comes down in price because that's a deciding factor. They're that close that I'll just say get whatever's cheap. And that's honestly where I sit here. At the moment, I can't give a definitive winner. I will be comparing these to the XPS 17, where I think that's going to have more performance than both of these, obviously. And it's going to have a bigger battery. So I might have better battery life. And that's the thing, right? You've got to choose what's most important to you do you want the battery life you're going to get the mac do you want the touch display do you want 4k you're going to get the xps 15 in terms of weight and size they're the same sort of thing but the xps 15 is more compact in terms of sexiness the xps 15 come on when you open that that is the future of laptops but then the mac looks better from the outside all right you got the sd card on the xps so maybe that gets the edge there and just again on displays mac probably more color accurate out of the box but again, not having the pop that the XPS 15 has. Fan noise, the same. Heat, the same. Good luck choosing between the two. Honestly, I can't choose between the two. What I'll say is just get whatever's the best deal. So in Australia at the moment, just get the Mac because the XPS 15 is just too expensive in Australia. It's costing more than a Mac and that's just insane. In the US, it's a different story. The XPS 15 is slightly cheaper. So maybe go the XPS 15 if you're in the US. I reckon that's probably the way to go. And then work out what's more important to you. It's going to come down to you. There is no definitive winner here. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Catch you in the next one. Tally ho.